Okay. okay. and welcome to Tanashi's Movie Corner and uh, for today's video I will be doing a versus matchup for round two of the animated tournament and it'll be How to Train Your Dragon 2 versus The Hunchback of Notre Dame and in order to determine the winner of said matchup we go based upon plot, main character, side character, songs, humor, villain, cast, romance, action, themes, and memorability and uh, Keep in mind, we we uh, we being my brother and myself who conducted our own tournament, uh, want it to be as objective as possible. You know that doesn't always apply to everything, but we do our best to. So let's get right into it and go with plot. And for plot, it actually uh, we gave it to How to Train Your Dragon too. And uh, the reason uh, being is both of them have actually really good plots uh, and and really uh, work out. You know, Hunchback is certainly one of the darker themed uh, Disney animated movies. But How to Train Your Dragon 2, it does a good job of having its own uh, plot centered and within this story, but it also branches from the first one and, and does it in a very good way, and you don't lose anything. In fact, uh, you know, the whole deal with Hiccup and having this and kind of option to where he he could become a leader but he doesn't think he can you know he doesn't think he's ready for it he doesn't think that's him that world is him uh and at the same time he encounters an en enemy that you know he's told he can't change and he's he's like he's told several times throughout the course of the movie you know not you can't sit, change everybody not everybody is willing to listen and and so you have that and you have him and Toothless kind of growing cr uh, closer as well and you have the introduction of another character that I don't want to spoil but you have that and how that influences him and everything and and all this as a plot works really it all fits really well together uh, not to say that Hunchback is bad Hunchback has ha has a good one too um, but you know, it, it seems like How to Drain Your Dragon 2 actually accomplishes a bit more uh, while at the same time having a very cohesive plot, whereas Hunchback, you know, doesn't just doesn't accomplish as much with its story. Uh, for So for main character, we also gave that to How to Train Your Dragon 2. Hiccup's a very strong main character. Got a lot to like about him. Uh, he's got a few flaws, but... You know, they're very identifiable flaws, and he really, as as a person, you really connect with him as a character. You really identify with him. Whereas Quasimodo, even though it's a story that's kind of a, an evolved around him, it's not just him. Uh, you know, there's the persecution of the gypsies going on and everything, and that takes a focus a little away from him. And he, he just doesn't have as much uh, growth and he is likable, and, and you know he does have his moment, but I don't think it's as big as what Doofle or sorry Hiccup has. So, you know, for that reason, uh, we gave it uh, main character to How to Train Your Dragon too. Side characters, though, we gave it to Hunchback. Again, going based on the plot, with you have Esmeralda and you have the Knight, and I can never remember his name, but they're a big focus of uh, Hunchback, and they work really well together they work uh, really well just in the movie and what they bring to it and they have a lot of uh, moments that really stand out within the movie and there's almost an argument to be made that they would be main characters but they're just slightly in the movie less so whereas How to Train Your Dragon 2 has side characters uh, quite a few of them but they just don't have that much of a presence they're there mostly for the humor uh, so for songs, we also gave that to Hunchback. How to Train Your Dragon 2 actually does have songs. I think I said it didn't before. It does. Um, the thing is, when we look at songs, we look at them by enjoyability as 
uh, well as how well they work within within the movie uh, how, how whether they help the movie along are they're kind of crucial to the movie because you get some some kind of story within the song uh, that helps you identify with the characters so it's relevance and how to train your dragon to for me personally doesn't have very much uh, enjoyment to it it doesn't seem like it's there the few songs that are there don't seem like they're there uh, for that re to be enjoyed by everyone whereas Disney movies tend to have songs that are enjoyed by a lot and at the same but more importantly the relevance just isn't there there's one song but that a uh, couple characters sing that's relevant to how train Dragon to but there's also I think a couple more that just aren't relevant at all and could have been you know left out of the movie and would have been fine they don't bring anything to it uh, for humor we gave it to how to train your dragon too again side characters bring a lot of humor and uh, you know toothless brings a lot of uh, humor his back and forth with hiccup uh, for villain we uh, gave that one to hunchback pretty easy the villain and a hunchback y you get you don't really get as much into his backstory but he brings a lot to his character whereas the villain and how train your dragon 2 is just kind of there to be an obstacle so you buy into the hunchback one a lot more and you see you see him get corrupted over the course of the movie even more so than he already was and so that's that's a real interesting thing for him Cass, we gave it to Out Train Your Dragon too. Uh, pretty much, you know, just T.J. Miller and Jonah Hill and uh, America uh, uh, Ferreira I, and uh, uh, Gerald Butler, uh, Kate Blanchett, um, Craig Ferguson. All those people really bring something to to their roles and really stand out now, especially it being the second movie. Uh, for romance, we gave romance to Hunchback. It between the night and Esmeralda really bought into it, really buy it over the course of the movie. And How to Train Your Dragon Two doesn't really focus on it. Um, for action, we gave it to How to Train Your Dragon Two. Both the movies have a lot of action in it, but How to Train Your Dragon Two does have a little more, and it has a much greater kind of stakes uh, that plays out uh, during part of it. So it kind of gives it the edge. For themes, we went to Hunchback. Again, the persecution of the gypsies and, you know, judging people based on how their appearance and the whole religion uh, corruption thing. Like, all those are really good. Uh, but rounding, rounding it out, we got memorability, which also, uh, we, well, we gave that one to How to Train Your Dragon 2. It just has, again, I, that one action scene I, I referred to earlier. don't want to spoil it, uh, but... You know, you have that. Um, you have a flight sequence between Hiccup and uh, Toothless, or the introduction of that that one character uh, that involves him. You you got these moments that really stand out. Whereas Hunchback is a really good movie, but there's not too many scenes that stand out. So uh, that'll about wrap this up. And uh, for the vote, we have a six to five in favor of How to Train Your Dragon Two. So How to Train Your Dragon 2 wins this one. Um, pretty cool comeback for the How to Train Your Dragon series, given that Hunchback beat the first one. But, you know, that's how it works sometimes. There's, you know, obviously a different story here. Even though you have the same characters, you know, different direction for the story. And uh, that really helped it out, I think. But what do you guys think? Would you have picked How to Train Your Dragon 2, or would you have gone with the Hunchback of Notre Dame? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments, and if you enjoyed this vid please click that like button and uh, make sure to share and watch my other vids and uh, look out for more. I plan on doing, you know, more. I think we got eight rounds, so we got uh, seven left, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, stay tuned for, for the rest of round two. Thanks.